some people like to think that the deep web is a joke. It's not. In no way is it a place some half-assed show-off should even think about stumbling into. In fact, I would tell even the most seasoned of hackers with any fiber of a moral compass to stay the fuck away from that place. Because it's a place that will scar you and leave you terrified to follow the cyber footprints left by someone else's shadow ever again. I know this because I'm a hacker. Or, at least I used to be one. I had been using computers since I was 12 years old. I had always been fascinated with the idea of being a cyber crusader, determined to find the new uncharted territories of the internet. I'd gotten pretty good at utilizing bits of software here and there, and it even got to the point where the slow crawl of dial-up internet didn't even affect me anymore. Especially when you knew what processes you wanted active and which ones you could afford to kill to increase the crawl rate of your PC. In other words, I had a pretty good idea of what I was doing. By the time I was 20 years old, I could both safely and confidently call myself an ace when it came to hacking. I could keep up with the best and had made a name for myself among many other netizens on the web. In fact, I was among the few thousands who had managed to come up with the formula to hack the Google search bar in order to delve deeper into the directories to get what we wanted. Call it our own personal attack for having bought the rights for YouTube and slapping content creators with copyright infringements left and right. The early years of YouTube back then were not pretty. I had my channel taken down several times because of Google's little purchase. But that's neither here nor there. This plays no bearing on the story. I'm simply giving you a little history lesson, especially for all the younger netizens out there. Anyone who was a hacker knew about the deep web. It pretty much had the same purpose as most would speculate it does today. Drugs, guns, illegal imports, you name it and that place pretty much had it. The deep web was, and is, the gateway into what is known as the global black market. I had purchased a few imported goods during that time and had a decent amount of drugs. It was about halfway through the first semester at my school. Sophomore year of college was my time to be stoned almost constantly, so I was a regular customer on the digital black market. Most of my friends came to me for the hookup, and I could always cut them a pretty good deal based on my frequent interactions with sellers on the net. To access the deep web, you didn't have things like Tor browsers, not back then. To access the darker side of the web, you needed to know what you were doing. Ghost hacking, proxies, parent directories, backdoors, scramblers, dump sites, these are all terms hackers utilized years back and when Java was not as prevalent in browsers as they are today. Back in the day, it was often referred to as the dark net. I don't know when it transitioned into the deep web and I don't really care, I'm never going back. I had just gotten some new equipment for my computer, the CRT I had been using finally quit and after ordering a new monitor and some more RAM I was pretty set to go. My plan was to try and barter for a better sound card when I could afford it with the vendors I went to on the dark net. I was setting up to do a little bit of gaming when I noticed I had an alert from one of my net friends saying they had stumbled across something interesting. A series of black boxes that when opened, seemed to lead you down another web directory. It was like tunneling, but more vast. Knowing my curious nature, he had passed the information on to me, knowing I would want to follow up on this information. I was one of the few vagrant hackers in my circle, an explorer, mindlessly taking one path and then another and opening up a door and seeing where it goes. Most times you would come across a treasure trove of information, or a dead end. He hadn't cut any corners when he broke down everything to me. His start point, the different pathways he had taken, how often he had reset his IP address per 30 to 45 seconds, what protocols he had used to cover up his trail, and the level of encryption that he had encountered with each box and how long it had taken him to reach the next one. Seven boxes he had come across, and upon reaching the seventh is where he'd gotten stuck. Challenge accepted. I quickly glanced over the data, already booting up the ghost hacks and IP scramblers. I needed to have what was in front of me knocked out of the way as well as being able to cover my own ass. With the new encryption I had made, I would be able to latch onto an existing IP address for 30 seconds before bouncing to another one, making it seem like I had disappeared. 
This was great in theory, but forced my movements to be slow when it came to being able to do things on my sad little and spear on. In ten short minutes, I was ready to go. Like he had shown me, I followed his pathways and activated my encryptions to keep myself safe, wandering from parent directory to parent directory. It didn't take long for me to run into the first black box. Just a basic encryption that took almost no time to break through. Inside was a directory with four different subdirectories. I knew that the second link was where my friend went, but my curiosity led me to pick the first one. In about three minutes, I realized it was a dead end, so I quickly backtracked and made my way to the main directory, deciding that I wouldn't deviate from his original path. In about half an hour, I ran through all six black boxes, coming across the seventh and realized that the encryption on this particular box was very different. Every hacker, no matter how good, leaves a sliver of information behind. You just have to know what to look for. I knew my friend had been here and this is where he had gotten stuck. This was a unique lock, one that I knew would take a bit of time to break through the encryption. It was a Thursday night, I'd finished up my work early for a change and I wasn't called into work so I had time to kill. Now this box was a tricky little shit, I had never run across so many tedious things to break through in my entire life. It was more annoying than an actual challenge. A tug here, a pull there, slipping and dipping and moving around all the different codes in an attempt to decipher just what all this information entailed. But I wasn't allowed the luxury of lingering because the minute I got distracted to see and understand what exactly I was swimming through, the encryption would completely kick me out of the box, forcing me to start all over again. After another 45 minutes, I managed to break through and I felt like I was sitting on top of the world, but the only problem was that I was in another directory again. Except this time, there was only one thing inside of it. It was a redirect hyperlink labeled WTTMH. I was too happy to know I'd broken through the damn encryption code blocking this pathway that I didn't even stop to think and wonder what those letters meant. Like a fucking pleb, I just clicked on the link and let it redirect me. My ghost was active, so I wasn't worried about being traced. It did its thing, redirecting me to another website. This site took a little bit longer to load. Possibly because my ghost was attempting to filter and tunnel through anything that would have pinged me on someone's radar. This was also an indication that I had entered through a back door. One that I really didn't have any business utilizing, but I did anyway. When messing around in the darknet, you only ever use the back entrance onto pages if you thought you were the shit and didn't think you'd get caught. That, or you were the site manager themselves. About five minutes later, the webpage finally loaded up. Soft, creepy carnival music played in the background, barely above the sound of a whisper. Even with headphones on, I had to really pay attention to take notice of it. Across the window, in big, bold letters, read, Welcome to the Monkey House. I was immediately intrigued. Being the huge Kurt Vonnegut fan that I am, I recognized the title for what it was. But for anyone who has read the compilation of short stories, I assumed I was about to walk into a place full of rebels, preaching on their soapboxes like they were Harrison Bergerin. I wished that had been the case. I wished it more than anything, now that I think back on it. A window popped up on the bottom right of the browser, a chat window and a greeting message. I'll never forget the way my heart almost shrank in on itself in response to that gray box. It read, Welcome to the monkey house, home of all the chills and thrills you can imagine and some even beyond your wildest dreams. Would you like a guided tour? Despite my interest, I didn't want to linger around in this place. The host was most likely surveying the area and monitoring all traffic flow spilling onto the site. Hell, the site owner could have very well been the one pinging that automated message to me right that second. No thank you, I wrote. If you insist, do you already know your way around the monkey house then? I don't think I've seen you around here before. No, I was referred by a friend. I couldn't believe I just straight up lied like that. But I had panicked. Something told me that this wasn't some bot. 
I was talking to a real person and I already knew I was a lot further in the dark net that I normally wandered into. They could eat me alive if I gave them a single reason to get suspicious of me. Their response. Oh, you mean for the event this evening? We had given guest vouchers to all of our VIP members so they could invite their friends to tonight's special event. Event? What the fuck? There was an event? I decided I would just play along so as not to give myself away. I had clearly come across a membership-only site, waltzing in through the back door like I owned the place. Yeah, that's it. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I don't know my way around and I don't see any guide links telling me where I need to go or even where I can go. Well, you wouldn't be able to see any of that with a guest voucher anyway. The Monkey House is membership only and the only way in is either through a voucher or an actual invitation. This explains why I didn't recognize your IP address. My heart dropped into my stomach. Oh shit, he could see my IP which meant that if I didn't turn off my piggyback code, they would see my IP change right before their eyes. Panicking, I quickly pulled up my command prompt window and stopped my ghost from scrambling my IP and latching onto another person's as they passed within my latch zone. I stared at my now static IP address, listing that I was from Turkey. I see. Well, the event will be starting soon, just follow this link when you're ready. Chatting is free, but the picture quality will be reduced to SD resolution since you're just a guest. HD is for members only. I understand. Basic etiquette applies. You will receive one warning and then afterwards you will be banned. You are free to leave before the event has concluded, but your IP will be permanently blocked from regaining entry unless you are able to get a personal invitation to return back to the monkey house. Your IP has been logged for future reference so that we may extend the invitation to you in the future. We will not be held responsible for any physical, emotional, or psychological trauma that you may incur due to attending the event. Do you understand the rules? I was so fucked. <sighs> yes, I understand. Excellent. Well, as previously stated, just click on that link that I provided and it will take you directly to where the event is being taken place. Thank you for coming and enjoy the show. The window disappeared off my screen and all I could do was stare at the website. The dark carnival music continuing to play softly in the background. A ticker flashed across the top of my screen announcing that the event would be taking place in just a few short minutes. I suspected that I was still being monitored, so I clicked on a link and it redirected me to another page, where a graphic of a stage and velvet red curtains were drawn. Ambient sounds that you would normally hear in a theater. The hushed whisperings of the audience, shuffling of programs, and even a person coughing every so often could be heard. I was impressed. They'd certainly gone all out for this thing, whatever it was. When it got to about 10 minutes till the launch, another window popped up on my screen. This time larger than the first and different screen names began to pop up inside as people came into the room. It was clearly a group chat window, the one that would allow all of us to talk to each other while the show began. Some people immediately passed off greetings as though they were being reunited with old buddies for the game and knocking back a beer. I hadn't chosen a screen name yet, remaining as the default anonymous 10235 or whatever the fucking number was at the end of it. A soft piano sound rang out and we watched the animated curtains part and behind it was a video screen, more than likely connected to some live feed. The camera was off and the transmission was offline as stated in the top right corner of the window. People's excitement was clear in the chat, and they all discussed what the event would be about. It must have been an understood rule not to talk in detail about what had been previously showcased in another session, as no one dared to drop hints or blatantly speak about what they had seen before. This was crazy. I was scared before I had even really did anything. Nothing was happening and I felt extremely on edge. That should have been my first sign that I needed to get the hell out of there but I still hadn't said anything. Someone took note that I hadn't either. Hey, you think Anon went AFK? 
I went wide-eyed at this screen. Don't know. Yo, Anon, where you at? Say something, creepin' ass motherfucker. A chill ran down my back, slow and unsettling before I let my fingers fly across the keys. The first was to change my screen name. Waki Blaster. It was a desperate attempt to combine two aliases I'd previously been known for into one thing. My mind switched back into hacker mode and I cleared my throat some, still mentally bracing myself for what was about to happen. I'll say something when I've got something to say, which won't be much seeing as how the show's getting ready to start. A few oohs and oh snap in response. I wasn't about to get an ego over some smart ass comment, not when I was in unknown territory like this. In hindsight, I should have just left. I should have just said fuck this place and dipped out of there. But I was too afraid of giving myself away, especially now that I had bothered to open my stupid mouth. A hailstorm of messages flooded the chat, mostly people counting down the seconds as we hit the one minute mark. A time ticker appeared over the video window mounted on the stage when it hit 30 seconds. They went from white to pink and then a shade of red growing darker as the numbers decreased slowly to one. Zero was completely blood red and then disappeared from the screen as static appeared in the video frame. The show was about to begin. A person with a mask appeared on the screen. The mask, a stark porcelain white with a pair of painted blue eyes and a black twisted smirk spreading across the lower portion of it. Their wild, matted hair stuck out around the edges of the mask, the rest hidden by a silk top hat. He was dressed to the nines, a deep red and black three-piece suit and half cape draped over one of his shoulders. He held a long, black cane with a silver skull atop the handle as the decorative piece. Good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. For all returning members, it is so very good to see you again. As for all the newcomers, I welcome you to the Monkey House. I'm your host, Hans Twilight, the ringleader of this humble little carnival of mine. I couldn't help but laugh a little, feeling some of my anxiety wash away. <laughs> what the fuck was I watching? I had been so worried about a sideshow freak like this. Jovial music played in the background of the video and I leaned back in my chair, silently fussing at myself for having gotten so worked up over nothing. We have a very special treat in store for all of you this evening. Are you ready for this little show of ours to begin? The chat room was soon flooded with messages confirming that they were, in fact, ready. Hans appeared to be looking off to the right where the window was and he let out a chuckle. Rolling the cane between both of his leather-gloved hands, he leaned towards the camera a bit more and tilted his head to the side. Very well, let the show begin! He stepped away from the screen, giving out a wide, flourishing gesture with his cane as he pointed the tip to an area behind him. It was too dark to see anything until an overhead light came on, illuminating a man strapped to a table who was wearing an elephant mask. He struggled against the leather straps binding him just as a buzzsaw roared to life at the space between his legs by his ankles. There was applause being heard in the video. Something I had assumed, and hoped, was just an audio track that was playing in response. The chat was going crazy with excitement as my heart sank into the pit of my stomach, the realization of what was happening hitting me. I immediately covered my mouth with my hands. Oh my god. Starting out the night, we have Ringo, ladies and gentlemen. You all casted your votes last week and we held a little competition to see who this week's winning executioner would be. Trixie Mir 571 you are this week's winner and get to choose how each of our three attractions get to die. Your entry, Death by Table Saw, is what helped you win the competition, so here it is. I watched as that very screen name began to type out her gleeful screams and everyone else congratulated her. All except me. Did no one care about the muffled screams of the man strapped to the fucking table saw? What the fuck is wrong with these people? I was sitting there literally watching as Trixie typed more stuff into the chat window. I wanted to tell myself that this wasn't real, that this couldn't be real, but as Trixie typed out that she wanted the man to be slowly inched forward towards the saw, it became horrifically clear that this was in fact real. 
two men unstrapped his restraints and the elephant man immediately began fighting against them. Sadly, the other guys were bigger and stronger than him, each grasping for his respective wrists and ankles. His screams began to elevate as his legs were spread and arms held straight up above him. The sound of blades cutting into human flesh is no different than the sound of a butcher carving into a hunk of meat. The hum of the buzzsaw escalated as soon as it made contact and the spray of blood that followed made me turn my head and cover my mouth. Elephant Man's screams were now a high-pitched squeal and had I not been so afraid of vomiting, I would have used both of my hands to cover my ears. So I was greeted by the sounds of death while closing my eyes. I couldn't watch, I just, I just couldn't, but the sound of meat being sawed through, the cracking of bones and the spray of blood intermingled with the horrible sounds of his screams would be forever burned into my mind. I ignored these sick bastards in the chat room because they were clearly all getting their fucking rocks off on this shit. During my time moving around in the dark net, I had heard rumors about stuff like this. These twisted shows with nothing but horrible people and guaranteed deaths for their victims. Each member paid monthly dues or some other bullshit, and the worst part was that the general public wanted more. They paid to watch people get tortured and killed and then cast aside without much of a care in the world. It was fucking murder. It felt forever before only silence remained in that place. That fucking audience applause track played again along with the dark carnival music. It wasn't until I opened my eyes to look back at my computer screen that I realized I had been crying. Never in my 20 years of life had I ever experienced anything so fucking messed up. I was that young person who had grown up believing in the good in everyone, that all people deserved a second chance. Not these guys. They all needed to be dumped off in a nuclear waste zone and left there to fend for themselves. Every single one of them. But I couldn't call them out on it. I couldn't threaten to tell the cops either. It would have been nothing for one of those guys on his team or even the actual site host to look at my static IP and realize I was actually piggybacking off of someone else. And without a way to escape, they'd zero in on my true IP address and quite possibly hunt me down. Actually no, scratch that, they would hunt me down. I tried to exit out of the browser just to pull myself out of that nightmare. My browser wouldn't close, not even hard killing it through the task manager did anything. Some kind of script on the site was preventing me, and everyone else, from being able to close the browser. We were locked in. We couldn't get out. I couldn't get out. Well that was certainly colorful, wasn't it? Let's have Bridget come out now. The next victim was brought out. A young woman wearing a tiger mask. She was sitting in a clawfoot bathtub filled with water, a live battery and jumper cable situated on a table nearby. No, 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 fuck! I didn't care anymore, I couldn't watch another second of this. I activated my command prompt, I was going to kill these scripts one at a time if I needed to. I just needed to make enough of a hole for me to wiggle out of. Just enough to get myself out and have it seal itself shut behind me. Since I assumed I was the only one trying to get out, then a couple of scripts dying here and there wouldn't bring me any unwanted attention. The very second I killed one script, a separate chat window popped up onto my screen. I've been waiting on you to make your move. My mouth went dry almost instantly, my hands frozen as they hovered above the keyboard. No, they couldn't have noticed that, it was just some basic insignificant code that wouldn't have affected any of the scripts on the current page. It was just some silent background coding. I decided to play dumb. What are you talking about? You think I don't recognize a fucking ghost hacker when I see one? God fucking damn it. I had been so careless I knew I had. I should have never let my curiosity get the better of me. I'll give you some credit though. I know you're not in Turkey, but you're doing a fan-fucking-tastic job of misdirecting me from your real one. Now I was scared. I was fucking terrified. This person was trying to put a crack in the only shield of protection I had in this place. If I had known this was going to happen, I wouldn't have bothered making my IP static in the first place. My misdirection sequence would only be successful for so long before it finally lost its effect and I would be discovered. 
This was my first time running across another hacker with malicious intent against me. I didn't know what I would expect or what would come of me the moment I was caught, but I didn't care anymore. Without blinking, I reached behind my rig and pulled the power supply cord loose from the machine. My screen went dark and the carnival music was no more. I didn't waste another second. Getting my tools out, I started dismantling my tower, all but ripping parts out of the machine before dumping memory sticks and various other components into the bathroom sink. I flooded them in the basin without a second thought, returning to my room and grabbing a handful of refrigerator magnets and started running them across everything that had been inside my rig. My roommate walked in just as I was stripping the shell of my rig to the bare minimum and when she asked what I was doing, I told her that it was in her best interest to not pry about it. Not that I would have told her anyway. It's safe to assume I tore the ever-living shit out of my machine. It's also safe to assume that for the next six months, I didn't go anywhere near a computer that wasn't part of campus property and outside of my school email, I erased all of my previous emails and messenger names, even the ones dating back as far as middle school. I did everything I could to erase my very existence off the internet world for a time and stop being a hacker altogether. I hadn't even let any of my contacts know I was going off the grid on the net. Maybe it was better for them not to know. I never did tell my friend that I managed to break through that last black box. I still haven't, even after all these years. I don't know if that place is still running or not, or if after eight years, the person in charge finally just had enough and threw it all away. To tell you the truth, I don't want to know either. I took one thing from that experience and made one wish, that for the rest of my life, I never see a message addressed to me saying, Welcome to the monkey house.